All right. Um, so the next part is going to be, let's get rid of this, um, making this look more like the original drawing. So actually, let's pull that back out. Let's go to the layers and see what we're talking about. Um, in this case, uh, you know, it's a yellow, yellowish uh, helix, and uh, there's some dark shading, and there's a little bit of light shading. Um, so that's what we're going to try to recreate. Uh, we're only going to use uh, three colors to create that. You could use more if you wanted to spend more time on it. Uh, but we're going to just go with three for now, just for this demonstration. And um, yeah, let's go from there. So we can close that, turn that off, turn off the visibility, go back to our helix, and um, let's go from there. Um, so at this point, I want to, we're going to select this, and I don't want to damage my path, um, but I, and I want to keep it in the same position. So I'm going to create another layer, and uh, we're going to copy back, which is Control-C-B, and that's copy back. Uh, again, as you can see, if I move this one, there's one behind it. I'm going to Control-Z to move that back into place. Um, and we're going to select one of them, move it into this new layer, and I'm just going to lock it, hide it, and just save that in case we need it. Um, so from here, uh, we're going to put, uh, let me see, where is my stroke palette? There we go. Put some caps on that. I don't know. I just wanted to put those on there. Um, so I guess the first thing that we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to turn that path, uh, let me see, path, we're going to outline it, so outline the stroke, uh, object path, outline stroke, and there you go, um, so there we have that, now I've already pulled uh, some swatches off, um, I've already chosen a yellow, so I'm just going to hit that, and you know, it uh, resembles the original one. Uh, you could spend more time to make it a little more accurate. Um, now, to get our shading, um, let's make a, a swatch on the artboard here. And uh, we're going to duplicate that. And uh, so we have one, and we're using, I guess I'm in a, uh, a CMYK here, uh, color mode. Um, so let's go, uh, all right, so pretty good. So, so now all we have to do is just add some black to get our shade color, you know, whatever degree we're comfortable with. And um, for our highlight, we'll probably just end up using white, um, uh, which obviously won't show up on the white background that well, but uh, we'll put a different background color on there just so you can see it a little bit better at the end. So um, here we go. I mean, we're pretty close to the end here. Um, so we have this color. I want to load this into my swatch palette, which is off your screen, but uh, there we go. So that's what you would want to do. You definitely want to have that loaded as a swatch. Um, it's just easier to uh, work with once it's in the swatch palette as opposed to using the color picker. Um, so, all right, um, here we go. We're gonna add some highlights to this. Um, now, to do this, uh, we're gonna be using the Pathfinder tool uh, and the uh, copy back or copy front. Uh, the only difference between copy back and copy front is for copy front, it would be control C F, so copy front. Um, so here we go. We're going to select that object, copy, front. And we're going to need another one because we don't want to uh, damage our lower layer, our, our main form that we have here. So we're going to hit F, control F again. So I'll just separate them so you can see. That's one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to control Z, get those back. Um, and what else we do? We're going to lock one of these. So I'll just select the top one and do Control-2. So now that top layer is locked. Um, I'm going to select the uh, other two layers, and I'm going to move them to the front. So that is Control-Shift-Bracket-Right. 
and um, now we can move in and start setting this up for a Pathfinder operation. Um, so I'm going to control Y so I can see our outlines and uh, we're going to move um, the, the shading on the dark, uh, it's going to be in this area, like on the outside of this. The Pathfinder, uh, it's kind of one of these tools, uh, depending on which operation, it's it's a little difficult to describe. You just have to mess with it um, to uh, get a feel for how to use it. And even looking at this here in a video tutorial, it's still a little confusing. I'm looking at this and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to explain this to you. But you just kind of, just trust me. <laughs> trust me, it works. Move that back into position. There we go. So, what you can see is I've just, uh, you can now see a form uh, coming into shape that is going to be the shading. So I took the top object and uh, nudged it up and to the left. Uh, so now I should be able to select both of them. Uh, let's go back into uh, preview mode, that's control Y. Uh, we're going to select both objects uh, and minus back. There we go. And there is our shading, our dark shading. Um, it's, hmm, that's okay. I, I don't know, I, wanna, I want the shading to be a little bit heavier. Uh, so I'm going to undo that. And pretty much I'll just uh, move that a little bit further. Select both of the objects again. Minus back. And there's our dark. So we're getting there. And another thing, as I said earlier, we wanted to put a little highlight on it. Um, so... Um, as you see earlier, what we did with the uh, main object, we locked it by hitting uh, Control 2 so it can't, it can't be selected at this point. It's still in the same layer, but uh, the lock, it, it's only that one object that's locked. So to unlock it, it's Control Alt 2. Now that's unlocked. Um, so uh, again, we're going to do uh, Copy Front, so Control Alt F. And, oops, so, control, F, F. So now we should have three objects again that we're going to use. One's the, the main form that we're using, and then the other two are going to be what's going to create the highlight. So, control, Z, Z, to move them back into shape. And, again, we want to lock one of them, so that's control two. So now we're only dealing with two objects. And again, this one is locked. Okay. Gonna go control Y into outline mode, and we're just gonna move, we're gonna nudge this one in the opposite direction, down and to the left. Uh, the highlight's gonna be um, lighter than the shadow, in this particular image, so um, I'm not going to nudge it as far. Um, and I think we are ready to go. So now I'm just going to make sure, select both of them, control Y to get back into preview mode, uh, minus back in the Pathfinder tools, and that's not what I wanted. Control Z. Um, we're going to move this one to the front, so control shift right, select both of them again, minus back, and that is what I wanted. Uh, now that's ready for color, white, so now we have our highlight on there, again uh, it's not very visible at this point, um, so we're going to put a background on there, uh, we'll go into the layers palette add a new layer and we'll just put a color back there make it black for now I'm gonna lock that layer 
and now you can begin to see that highlight that is on there. Okay, now for some final touches, uh, I guess what we see is that uh, there's no overlapping. Um, so we've lost the appearance that, um, that there is overlapping between these portions of the helix. Um, so we're going to need to address that. Um, so to do that, um, I guess uh, we'll have to apply it to all of these intersections, but we'll just start with this one. Um, and to do that, uh, this is what we'll do. Just zoom in and um, we can just, just add a few points. Uh, so we're going to hit the plus key and maybe here, oh, zoom in a little further. Okay, so that'll get us started. So we can grab this point, drag it up here, and we'll add one more. I'm hitting A to switch to the direct selection tool, and we'll connect it there, about there, that's fine. Um, maybe put a little contour in there. Uh, let me back out and see what we're looking like. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, and then we'll also want to extend the highlight. And uh, we don't really want to mess with these points that are around the edges because they're positioned exactly. So again, we're just going to uh, hit plus uh, to add some points. And we'll just drag out the color that way. Something like that. Oop, that's not right. Try this one first. Try this one to pull the highlight across. And so that has the appearance that we have overlapping portions of the helix. So. Uh, that looks pretty, that's fine. Uh, let's just refine that a little bit. Straighten out these handlebars. Oh, some new tool there. I've just started using CS4 and there's a lot of new stuff that I haven't really worked with yet. But anyway should be fine. Again, depending on how much accuracy you need, that will determine how much time you're going to spend doing this. Uh, but I think I'm fine with that. So uh, let's actually move these shadows in a little bit. Again, I want to add points instead of dragging the ones that are there because they're positioned pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, oh, that is a handlebar. So I'm going to pull that down to here. Something like that. Then zoom out, and there you go. Uh, all right, I'm going to fast forward at this point and do the remaining uh, overlaps, and it looks like we're almost there. Okay, carry the one. And there you go. That's about it. That's your helix. I'll uh, we'll just take a look at all these briefly. Yeah. And that's it. There it is. Um, after looking at this now, I kind of feel like these intersection parts are too close together. Uh, the way that I've illustrated it, um, putting these arches in here, uh, isn't really necessary that uh, by doing that it makes it look like these two are touching and uh, we don't really want to do that so I kind of feel like uh, just straightening these out is probably the way to go um, yeah yeah that's definitely now let me just do that real quick um, that's fine so
And there are lots of, like right here, for instance, we zoom in, and, you know, that's kind of an error, but uh, not, not too big of a deal. Okay, and that's it. A Helix in Adobe Illustrator.